Hey folks, Jonathan here. Uh, working on the backhoe. Okay, a uh, couple things. All right, of course, everybody knows this cylinder is shot, leaking very bad. So it's got to be done before we can do anything using wise. Uh, this one here is leaking. Uh, this is the one that somebody built with a uh, seal shaft and I just gotta what, what's happened I'm sure is it got some rust on it went in and out and and uh, I can polish that shaft up and as long as it keeps decent and we keep the outrigger up it will probably be just fine so uh, I've had shafts that wasn't chrome plated before so okay no steering I had a lot of people say well check the fluid because it's got a separate reservoir okay Here's the reason I did not put fluid in it where we were over there. I had to move it a pretty good ways uh, from where you seen it to get it onto the trailer. And I was getting conflicting stories on this thing from mechanics that had worked on it a long time ago and owner that I got it from. So one story was that uh, this thing, when you started it up, the steering turned all to one side, one way. And it wouldn't turn back and see we wouldn't have been able to get it loaded to the trailer so as I picked it up we just turned it by hand set it back down and we got it to the trailer okay so if I'd have put fluid in it and it went one way we would have been screwed on trying to get it there so that's why I did not do that uh, when I got it here I did put fluid in it but it just wasn't pumping and I think the owner told me that he don't think it was pumping the mechanic that worked on it just happens to be a friend of mine but it's been so many years ago but he told me he thinks that we he put a, a used orbital valve on it because it was leaking real bad and he thinks they repacked the cylinders for the steering but one of them may be hooked up backwards may or may not so i don't know but the pump don't seem to be pumping i can tell you that right now i don't seem to be getting anything through the pump so i bought a new pump and here's our new pump uh gear driven and that pump's 166 dollars and they've sold, you know, a couple hundred of them, I guess, between a couple sites. So it must be an issue, pretty bad issue. So anyway, we're going to change the pump out, see if we can get some steering on it. If we can get some steering on it, then at least I can put it where I need to put it to be able to split this thing, get our leak and our torque converter fixed, uh, get our, you know, uh, cylinders repacked. This one, this one, at the outrigger, and, you know, do a little work, get some air in the tires and all that good stuff, and get this thing where we can use it. Uh, I've got, I do have some stumps I need to dig, and I've got a tree I've got to take out. Now, like I said, I've already dug the one stump with it, so I know the hydraulics is strong. There's no problems with that. That thing's still sitting up, and it's been there for days. So, well, well over a week, I guess now, or a couple weeks. So, uh, front half, I went ahead and just put my skid steer bucket under it because I don't want it leaking down on me while I'm working. So, uh, ironically, the skid steer I bought, that's a 19... It's about the same year. It's early 70s, early to mid 70s, but uh, I got it and it was in way, way worse shape than this thing has ever been in. Uh, you know, it hadn't run in years and years. The engine was, there was pieces and parts taken apart, no seat, uh, a lot of, just a lot of stuff missing and all. So it had a, I think it was a 124 gas engine. And I took the engine out there was so much stuff in the skid pan that the oil pan had already rusted holes through it and it had a lot of other issues so that's when i had a friend that had a 580 and i found out the other day that they had actually split it and took the transmission out and took it somewhere and then the transmission got missing but i bought the engine but the rest of the machine is still over there so i can probably go buy a couple cylinders i know i need well i think i've got the cylinder for the back back here that's been welded on but uh, just in case the one I've got is not exactly right, I think it is, but it, you know, you don't ever know. Then uh, we could probably get one from there. But anyway, it's a good parts machine. It's all split in half and parted out already. And uh, there was a lot of these things made, and there's still a lot of them being used. So, uh, and you know, an old machine like this, yeah, hoses they're going to pop. Uh, you can do it one of two ways. You can go through there and redo all the hoses, or you can do them as you go. If you do them as you go. If you have one pop or start leaking, you need to change it quick. First, you don't want oil all over the ground if you can keep from it. I mean, the best of your ability to keep from doing that, but that stuff's expensive. It's gotten crazy now. And you know, the price of gas went down, the price of oil didn't go back down. So, 
you know they don't much care about that so uh anyway let me get this power steering pump off it's kind of a bear to get to it's all up under there so we're going to get the three bolts out of the front and the two lines off and we should be able to get the pump out of it and then uh, we'll go from there okay folks we've got the pump on and it's actually stirring but it's only stirring one way stir all the way to the right and won't go back to the left so i have a feeling that we're bypassing really bad on one of these cylinders uh, i think i will pull the hoses off and start skister up and pick the front of this up and i should be able to turn to turn it back and forth and check it and see uh, i can do it with air but i don't have any air down here where i'm at we're going to try to figure out which one of these cylinders are giving an issue i don't think it's in the orbital valve i'm pretty sure it's going to be in one of these cylinders we're going to check it out and see what we can figure out and i will show you when we get there let me show you how i'm going to test this thing Okay, I've unhooked this steering cylinder. I've got it lifted up just a little bit where with my skid steer where there's not a lot of weight on it. And we're gonna turn a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right. And we should be getting fluid one way out of one and the other, we turn it the other way out of the other one. So there's one closest to me and there's the one farthest away. Okay, so we know that nothing's wrong in here on this one. Now, I didn't do a pressure test to where uh, you know to make sure it's not bypassing but my problem is this thing is not steering at all so the bypass is not the problem it's steering one way and not at all the other way so now let's uh, do some more testing here we're gonna hook these lines back up and then we'll go to the other side and do the same test okay this side cylinder is not acting right when I go one way it was putting fluid out both let me see if I can get it to do it again no i'm too low on fluid oh there we go okay did you see that it put fluid out both ends at the same time and that shouldn't have happened so something's going on in this cylinder so let's see if we can get it apart and uh maybe we can figure out maybe the piston the nut could have backed off it could have sheared it the rod where the piston's not on the on it or it just could be bypassing real bad I don't know, but something is definitely wrong in this cylinder. So let's see what we can figure out. Well, this is how far we got. We got it off from the taper. You know, got the nut off. And I went to take it apart, or to pull on it. This is what we found. So we know what our problem is. Just what I thought. I figured it probably sheared it, but just the nut came off. So we're going to have to get into this cylinder and make sure that these threads they don't feel bad it's fine thread yeah just the nut has backed off from the cylinder now we just got to get the cylinder apart see if we can get it fixed get her back together and that should take care of our stirring issues now why are you cat scanning the whole the whole back here huh yeah yeah come over here tell me what you're scanning for huh what are you scanning for what are you looking for hmm? there's no mice in it there's no mice in it all right be careful okay folks we got the cylinder part and this nut was off it was laying in the bottom but I found this and can't figure out what it is. It might be a lock washer bent up and beat up that was in there. That's what it looks like. Or a washer. So anyway, I think I'm going to put a lock nut on or put some Loctite on it, get it tightened down good. And then uh, we can put this thing back together. I'm not gonna put a kit in it yet. We're gonna put this back together and the packings on the glands seem to be good inside it felt pretty good and then uh just got an o-ring here and there's no an ring on the well i think it might be a it might be a square ring on the cylinder but uh anyway it'll work we'll get it good and tight and lock tighter whatever we need to do i'd rather find a lock nut but uh get that on there and then uh we're gonna put this back together and see if we get some steering out of it all right okay folks i just put a teflon lock nut on it 
and tighten it up really tight it'll be fine so this cylinder may be a little different than what most people are used to I see a little trash I need to clean out of there uh, but anyway you see how it's sleeved inside the outer part of this is actually the upper side hose in other words instead of having a steel line that runs up from that end into here they just use it around that I mean it works fine uh, keeps you from having an exposed steel line out here now the replacements have got a line out here and I don't like that quite as well at least with this it'll be enclosed now I did notice a leak around this one it looks like someone had dented it at one time so I may try to find another one of these fittings I probably got one uh, these are called boss fittings they got O rings on them and boss to JIC but uh, anyway let's get this thing together clean it up and get it together and see what we can figure out okay folks cylinders back on put some fluid in the reservoir see if we can start it here Go around and see what happens. Uh, nothing yet. Oh, it's already turning this way. And it's starting back the other way. Got it. Oh, yeah. I'm going to change the seat. I'm going to raise the boom up so we get all the weight on the front end. Our tires are about flat, but that'll give us an idea how much power that turn's got. Alright, All right. there you go. There we go. Okay folks, steers like a new machine. Got a little bit of play in the, uh, well, I guess you call it kingpins, but nothing major. Uh, especially compared to a lot of them I've messed with, but uh, ready to work there. And then, uh, now normally I would have repacked that cylinder, but this cylinder first, there's a couple reasons. First, it's really, really easy to get to. Uh, I can have this thing popped off and and rebuild in you know just a few minutes matter of fact just pop this end off raise it up and pull it out and go with it but uh besides that uh, it's always cheaper if you go on ebay and order the kits instead of even getting them local and uh you know instead of thirty dollars for a kit for like this cylinder it would probably cost me you know i think about fourteen dollars for this cylinder so you know sometimes you're better off ordering them anyway so uh, it's not leaking at all. It's actually working great. There's no reason to spend the money on it if I don't have to. So we've got good steering now. That's finished. Now we've got this cylinder to contend with, which we definitely got to do something with. And uh, I'm not even going to put any more fluid in it until I get this cylinder right because it's too daggone expensive. So uh, we're going to deal with that cylinder. We're going to deal with splitting it. And at least I can drive it where I need to drive it to now with the steering. Appreciate everybody watching, and until next time, bye.